Okay, so this is page 21 in your workbook. And so when we're solving, again, we need to get the absolute value all by itself, which means we need to move this negative five by adding five to both sides. So we get the negative absolute value of two X is less than negative 15 plus five, which is negative 10. And then we have to divide by a negative one. So again, because we need to get the absolute value isolated. And remember, whenever you divide by a negative, you have to flip your inequality. So it's no longer less than, it now becomes greater than 10, negative 10 divided by negative one, which is positive 10. And now that we've isolated our um, absolute value, we can go ahead and set up our two inequalities. So the first one is this 2x is greater than 10. And then our second inequality is gonna be 2x, but we have to flip the inequality is less than, and we change our sign to negative 10. And then we just solve each inequality. So we divide both sides by two and x is greater than five. And again, since it's greater than, we know that this is a union, so it's gonna be an or. And then we divide by two. And so X is less than negative five. So when we go to graph, we have negative five and five, and it's an open circle because it's greater than and less than. And X is less than negative five. So we shade to the left. And X is greater than five, so we shade to the right. All right, this is a lot. Any questions? Okay, we'll keep going. So, um, first we need to get the absolute value all by itself. So we need to subtract one first from both sides, leaving us with three times the absolute value of X minus two, which is greater than 16 minus one, which is 15. Divide both sides by three so that we get the absolute value all by itself is greater than 15 divided by three, which is five. And then we set up our two inequalities. So X minus two is greater than five. And then X minus two is less than negative five. So we add two to both sides and X is greater than seven. We add two to both sides and X is less than negative three. So we have negative three and X is less than, and then we have X is greater than seven. And again, they're open dots because they're greater than and less than. Okay, go ahead and try the last one.
we get stuck, you can send it to me, but send me a question in the chat too and I can help you. All right, are you guys done? Anyone want to tell me what they got? Maybe we need more time. I know it is hard to put the answer in the chat. So let me write it down and let's see if you guys got it. So the answer is X is less than or equal to two. And then X is greater than or equal to negative three. And then when we graph, we're gonna do close circle because it's also equal to, so it's greater than negative three. And then it's less than positive two. So it's an intersection right there. How'd you guys do? You guys want me to go over it or did you guys get it? I got it completely wrong. Okay, let's do it then. So first thing we wanna do is divide both sides by four to isolate our absolute value, which is two X plus one is less than or equal to 20 divided by four, which is five. And then we just need to set up our two inequalities. So 2x plus one is less than or equal to five. And then 2x plus one is greater than or equal to. So we flip the inequality for our second one. And then we change the positive five to negative five. And then we just solve for x. So we subtract one. 2x is less than or equal to 4, divide by 2, and so x is less than or equal to 2. And then we subtract 1 from both sides, so 2x is greater than or equal to negative 6. We divide both sides by 2, and x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Any questions? I figured out because I did, I subtracted the four instead of dividing it. That's oh. why. Okay. Perfect. This would be good. Okay, and then let's talk about special cases. So um, we also have some special cases where there can be all real numbers. So something like the absolute value of X is greater than negative three. Well, we know the absolute value is always positive, right? So if you take the absolute value of negative two, it's positive two, right? If you take the absolute value of positive two, it's still pos it's positive two. So remember the absolute value is always positive. So anytime that's the case, your solution is gonna be all real numbers. So the absolute value will always be positive. And therefore greater than.
the negative three or any negative number, which is why the solution is all real numbers. And then we also have cases when there will be no solution. So if we have something like the absolute value of X is less than negative three. Well, we just said the absolute value of any number is always positive. So it's never gonna be less than negative three because the only numbers less than negative three are negative four, negative five, negative six, all the negatives. And so here we would have no solution because the absolute value will always be greater than negative three. So any value you substitute will result in a false statement. Okay, so let's look at the first one. So the absolute value of y plus 32 is less than 18. So first we need to um, isolate our absolute value. So we subtract 32 from both sides. So we have the absolute value of y is less than 18 minus 32, which is negative 14. So what do you guys think? Is this going to be all real numbers or no solution? Is any number we put in there going to make it true or is any number we put in there going to make it false? Um, it'll make it... Um... There's no solution. Very good, Victoria. Yes, exactly. There's no solution because the absolute value of anything we put in there is always going to be positive. And so a positive value is never going to be less than a negative value. So there's no solution. That's right. There's nothing we can put in there that will make it true. Okay, try the second one. And be careful in this one because you do have to flip the sign. So we subtract three from both sides to start out. Negative two times the absolute value of three X minus five is greater than or equal to three. When you divide by the negative two right here, make sure you flip the inequality. And then send me what you think, if it's all real numbers or no solution in the chat.
with Jasmine. John and Victoria, what do you guys think? Good, Victoria. John? Still... Say it again, John. I'm still working on it. Oh, OK. No problem. OK, so it would be no solution, right? Because again, we know the absolute value of anything is always going to be positive. So again, we can never have um, a positive less than a negative. And so there's no solution. There's nothing we can put in there that would make this true. It, this absolute value is always going to be greater than this negative number. Okay, go ahead and try the last one. And then send to me in the chat, no solution or all real numbers. And before I forget to tell you guys, um, I changed the quizzes. So now from 1.5 on, you guys all did fine on the first few. Um, starting at 1.5, I changed it to three attempts on the quizzes because I know they're hard. So if you don't do, if you don't get all of them right on the first try, you get two tries and then it shouldn't be giving you the correct answer choices anymore. So I guess after the first attempt, it was telling you the correct answers. It shouldn't anymore. And then that way you have two more attempts. Um, and then we'll keep the highest score. So if there's any that you do want to go back and try after 1.5, um, you should you should be able to. I haven't done all of them. I just did the few that were covered recently from 1.5 to like, I don't know, one point. I might have done it up to 1.10. I can't remember. But um, yeah, if that's stressing you out, you don't have to stress. So you'll you can have a few more attempts now. Okay, what did you guys get for this last one? Well, hold on. let's set it up first. So let's see if we add four to both sides. We get the absolute value of 3t is greater than negative 16. Yeah, so if we think about it, the absolute value, any we know it's going to be greater. It's going to be a positive value, right? So think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Anything we put in there is going to be greater because it's a positive value is always going to be greater than negative sixteen than a negative number, which is why it is all real numbers. Okay, so it's 2.33. Do you guys want to do the 1.8 quiz or do you guys wanna just go off and do it on your own? 
you you do have the three attempts, but I can do it with you guys, or if you'd rather do it on your own, that's fine too. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. So, and it, if you want to leave too, that's fine. Whoever wants to stay can stay. Whoever wants to go can go. So let's open up 1.8 absolute value inequalities quiz. All right, so it's two. I thought I changed them all to three. Okay, can you guys see both my screens? Can you kind of see my blank paper and see the quiz questions? Yes? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, so which graph represents the solution to the absolute value of X is less than six? So we would have X is less than six, and then we would have X is greater than negative six. So if we go ahead and graph that, we have x is greater than negative six. So it's an open circle and it's greater than, so we shade to the right. And then we have positive six, which is an open circle and x is less than that. It's an intersection right there. And so that would be this first one. Is that your quiz question number one? I don't know if they're in order. The questions might be shuffled, but everyone has this question, right? Yeah. Is it number one for you guys or is it shuffled? Um, for, for me, it was number one. Victoria, you too? Um, it's shuffled for me. Oh, shuffled, okay. Well, we'll go through all of them and hopefully, I think we should all have the same questions at least, even though they're shuffled, okay. What is the solution of the negative absolute value of t plus three plus three is greater than or equal to negative four? Go ahead and try it. All right, so let's see how you did. So we subtract three, the negative absolute value of t plus three is greater than or equal to negative seven. Now we have to divide by negative one. So don't forget to flip your inequality. Those cancel out. Then we have the absolute value of t plus three is less than or equal to seven.
Any questions so far? Okay, now we have set up our two inequalities. So t plus three is less than or equal to seven. And then t plus three is greater than. We flip the inequality and change it to a negative seven. We solve for t. So t is less than or equal to four. And then t is greater than or equal to negative 10. So t is not greater than or equal to four. It is less than or equal to four, which is right here. And then t is greater than or equal to negative 10. So it's this one. Any questions on number two? All right. Number three, what is the solution set or which shows the solution set for the inequality two? Times the absolute value of three X minus one, minus one is less than seven. Go ahead and try it. And really now that I'm looking at it, actually, you don't really have to work it out. So since it's less than, we kind of already know what the graph's gonna look like, right? If it's less than, we know that we're gonna have two open circles that intersect, the, the solutions intersect. And so there's only one option. Do you guys want to leave it at that for number three or do you guys want to go through and solve it? <laughs> okay, we'll leave it at that. So then we know it's this one. Okay, which is the best first step in solving the absolute value inequality? So negative three times the absolute value of five X plus six plus one is greater than six. What would you do first? Divide both sides of the inequality by negative three, split the inequality into a compound and inequality, split the inequality into a compound or inequality or subtract one from both sides. Yep, thank you, Jasmine. Yep, we'd want to, we'd want to subtract the one first and then we would do the dividing. And then number five, which can you use to find the solution set for two times the absolute value of one minus X plus one is greater than or equal to three. So we don't have to solve all the way. We just have to set up our two inequalities. So we would subtract one first. And then we would divide both sides by two. 
And so the absolute value of one minus X is greater than or equal to one. And then we would just separate them. So one minus X is greater than or equal to one. One minus X is less than or equal to the negative one. So one minus X is less than or equal to one and one minus X is greater than or equal to one. All right, this is tough stuff. How do you guys feel? Any questions? And did we all have the same questions, those five? No one had different questions? Yay, okay, good, perfect. All righty, well, thank you guys for coming. You're free to go. I'll stay on too if you have any individual questions that you wanna ask me, but if not, I will see you guys next week. Have a good week. Bye. Bye.